Okay, now we have a user form that looks like this. And let's add some more controls to it. So let's add another label here. And I could do something like this and go here and add a label. Oops. And add a label here. But then I would have to go in and change the size and the font size and, and the, the color, not the color, but the font size and the boldness. And I don't want to do that because it takes a couple seconds. So I'm just going to do something that's a little faster and copy a, a label that's up here and paste it in. So if I copy and paste this control, I can just go down to the properties window and I'll do um, LBL underscore uh, feeling and the caption I'll change to how do you feel today so now I get a label that looks like this could drag it a little bit more and you can copy controls if you right click on them you can copy all these controls so it saves time to copy controls you just have to go back and change some of the properties of the, of the newly copied control now let's put a combo box on the user form so to do that I'll go in here I'll find this combo box icon and I'll put it right here and a combo box if I run this look what it does it's just like a text box but it also has this list functionality here and you can will enter things that people can select from a list so the reason it's called combo because it's a combination of a text box and a list so <clears throat> let's populate some things in this list here to do that we need to use what's called the initialize the initialize event um, of the user form and to get to it you just double click on the user form so you double click and now some code popped up and it says private sub user form dot click and this is going this is like going back to the video on events where we have this drop down list that we can select something from and then there's a bunch of events over here that we can just select and when we do that some code is created so I can delete this and I'll even delete this user form underscore click because the code we want is in this user form drop down. So I'll select user form from that drop down and I'll select initialize from this drop down. Let me delete this, sorry. And this is the code we want. This user form underscore initialize. This is attached to this form, frm underscore enter data. And it allows us to populate our controls with data so that when the user first sees it, the lists are populated. Um, you could populate text boxes with text. You can do all kinds of stuff. But this is like the initial values. This is where you set those initial values for all your controls. So we can do something um, like, let me just get the name of this. It's combo box one. I want to change the name to combo underscore feeling and then I could go to this initialize and go combo underscore feeling dot add item this dot add item is going to add it add an item to our list our combo box list and the item I want to add is you know I feel good I also want to add an item so that the user can select something like I feel bad and I also want to add an item like select so that the user has to select something um, what I mean by this select is when the user form first pops up I want the user I want the combo box to show the word select so to do that I'll just copy this line and I'll put dot value is equal to select so here's my three options for my combo box list this one this line here uh, the dot value this sets the value of the combo box so 
So now when I run this, I get something that looks like this. I have three values in my list. One of them is select, and that was the default value that popped up when the user form popped up because of that initialize event that we're using. Notice, though, what a combo box is, is though it has a list and it has a text box, and you could write stuff in the text box. Um, if I click the button here, enter data on worksheet, watch what happens. I get an error here. Oops, I had some previous code here. Um, if I click this button, you know, here's where I'm moving the data to the worksheet, and now I can take the value of the combo box and I can assign it to I can assign it to the worksheet right here by putting it in the second column like this cells x row comma 2 equals whatever's in the combo box and I'll go over here to the worksheet and I have this column that says how do you feel so now if I run this I can put in a name Bob I can put in you know I feel good and I could run this and now both of those pieces of data are on the worksheet um, one bad thing about this is though if I run this with no name and if I do select it still puts that data on the worksheet so we need to build some error handling real quick to account for this basically we don't want to take bad data and put it on the worksheet so in this btn underscore enter enter in this button here just double click it we want to put some error handling like if txt underscore name dot value is equal to blank then and if and then we're gonna check also this combo box here this combo box value and if that's equal to select so we don't wanna we wanna stop this these co this code from running if they don't enter a name or they enter select for their question about how they're feeling. So what we'll do is we'll do a message box. You must enter a name. And then we'll exit this sub procedure by doing exit sub. So this just exits this sub procedure. Here's the sub procedure. If you once the code hits this line, if it ever does, it's just gonna jump down to this end sub. And we'll do the same thing for this bit of error handling that says you must answer how do you feel so now if I go and run it if they try to enter a name that's blank or select here I get a message box that says you must enter a name. Okay. So I enter a name, Bob. I click enter data. I get another message box saying you must answer how do you feel. Okay. So I go up here and I answer how do you feel. And I could even go in and change this because it's a combo box. Like I feel very bad. And click enter. And now I get good data in my worksheet. Uh, let me close this. One thing we also want to do is let's clear our worksheet. Let's clear this range every time we run our macro. So let's go up here, click on this button here. And when we select the sheet here, let's do a range A2 to Z50,000 dot clear contents. So every time we run this, we're only going to put one bit of data in in the. I guess we don't need to do that now. I'll, I'll just comment this out for now. Maybe we'll need that later. Um, 
So that's all this video was. It goes over the combo box. And the combo box, again, allows you to enter stuff like a text box or you can have a list. You want to be aware of, well, what if they enter something bad? So you can put, you can put some error checking like we did here. That checks the value of the text box or the value of the combo box. And then you could give a message and then exit the sub procedure so that they have a chance to enter good data. Um, in the next video, we'll look at more of these controls. So hang tight.